Stephen Shaw, American Surfaces, published by Fiden. 224 pages. I think this is the first edition in March 2008. It's got the cover of uh, a Kodak uh, develop processing envelope at America. It's got a nice dust jacket and then there's a sort of simple layout there of, of just a sheen, a sort of almost luster type cover. It's got that sort of Kodak yellow in there. And then there's an introduction by Bob Nichols. And then at the back, there's a sort of reference from by, by State. And then and that's it. And I'd say that's it very lightly because this is a mega book. This is a really important book. I don't really know where to start with it. We associate Stephen Shaw with a lot of photography in, in terms of leisure places and, and stuff like that and American landscapes in the 70s and the 80s, 90s and, and now even. Well, I think some, you know, like Eggleston and people like that were shooting colour against the grain of black and white. And if you look back at, say, a lot of the photography in the 60s, it was black and white. I think this, not only because it was colour, just in the way it sort of came about and why it happened and how it was shot and how it was presented, but it was a changing America. It was a changing period in America. And it's a very complex time, 1972, I think, in America. There was Watergate, it was Vietnam. The country was in, a, in, a, in the middle of so much turmoil. This moved away from that, not only shit in colour, but also it was like a road movie of everyday America. And I think Stephen was really clever in his approach on this and the way it was executed, the way it was presented. Even now, as symbolic with this Kodak cover is very symbolic of what he did at the time. And, and it's a fascinating book. And I have to admit, when I first looked at this years ago, and when I was aware of the American surfaces, I didn't quite get it. And many people might not get it until you start understanding what was significant about the time and where Stephen Shaw was at the time and America was going at the time. And it all just makes it so obvious that it's a, it's a really... In American photography, there's a pivotal point. I don't think it's mentioned that widely, but this is pop art as far as I'm concerned. And I'll tell you why I think it's pop art in a minute. Um, this is probably the worst point about this book, right? Is this bit here, is this introduction here, is the text design in here. Is, I find it horrible. I don't like this at all. I, I don't know whether they were doing that to make pages up or, or not, but I, I, this is just, I don't like this. Um, I, I'm not really sure why I don't like it. And there's a bit about Eggleston here, about the 70s colour photography and about the 70s, you know, changing that with Eggleston and um, going to get away from Gary Wynn and Grand and, and, and Robert Frank and, and sort of saying this was a pioneering attempt at book. And it, it was, but for me, it was an extension of pop art. It was an extension of Shaw's influence by pop art and the Warhol. You, this book is so influenced by Andy Warhol you might disagree. I see it, and I understand, and I get why. And because you've got to look at what pop art's about. And, you know, pop art is sort of symbolising the everyday life, the ordinariness of everything. And, and obviously there's printing techniques and there's all sorts of other stuff you have to take on board and that. But in terms of, this, in terms of the simplicity of everyday things and everyday life and turning it into something which is significant and, memor and, and memorable and giving it some meaning is a skill. And I, this is what this book counted on against the rest of American life at the time. So you've got 1972, you've got Vietnam, you've got, we've got, we've got um, politics in America is right up in the air. You've got the Cold War. There's no normality. And this book, with Shaw's influence of... I think pop culture, Warhol, and all of that has gone out 
with a vast amount of um, inspiration with a simple point and shoot camera. I think it was a Rolly or something like that. And he's gone out just to capture the everydayness of everything. And now it gets even more complex because he went out, um, and I'm not going to be a, 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 I'm not going to sort of talk about how many times he went out and whatever in Jade, but he went out on the road. He went out and just travelled around America, photographing everything, and that is great. That is that is what it's about. So this all might look simplistic. It's a time capsule of events, but it might look simplistic, and it might arguably be very simplified photography. It's a very beautiful depiction of 70s America. It's a beautiful depiction of normality in 70s America. It's a extension of an art movement and the beginning of another art movement because without this sort of looking at the straightforwardness of life like Eggleston did and that, you know, looking at the influence of colour on the landscape, but just the influence of people and symbols and architecture and structure and the obscene, sorry, the obscure. You wouldn't have an industry like we have now with the PARS and other photographers, you know, who later on, you know, we would have got a massive street culture, street photography culture. And this is where it began. And I know it began with a lot of photographers before that in black and white, I get that but I'm talking about this colour revolution in terms of way of thinking. And talk about this, argue about this, this is what I want. I want, I want people to question what I'm talking about. So Shaw went out, went out and um, just captured everything about him. Everything was a new vision, it was a new way of looking at stuff. This is North Carolina 72. And almost you could reflect it as something like, he's almost like a child in a sweet shop, isn't he? I don't think it's an amazing insight into, this is South Carolina, into American life and culture, using and looking at symbols and signs and the color. Now, there's a quote by Andy Warhol, actually, which has said something like, an artist is somebody who produces things that people don't need to have. We don't need to have this. Shaw didn't need to shoot any of this in terms of the simplicity. He could have looked for much more complex narrative within, this, within the pictures. But it's a road movie, isn't it? It's a travel through the symbols of America, going away from the symbols of chaos, which was prevailing and taught, which everything else was, America was consumed in, with death and space and war and politics. And this is really, in Texas, this is a real normality of it. Now, the other thing is that you've got all these pictures this size. Now, I don't normally like this sort of size because stuff like that, beautiful pictures, I want to see them big. And Now, I would presume that this looks like a, is it a six before size. In fact, I'll check, let me just check. This is the sort of standard lab size, yeah, six and a half by four, yeah. So now, what he did was, he, when he came back from the travels and, and shooting, he came back with hundreds of rolls of film, and he went to the Kodak Labs in uh, New Jersey and processed all the film. And this case is the sort of bag, one of the bags with the ninety process um, on the, of the thingy. So I guess this is the bag and stuff it came in, the E6. And 
what he did was, this is the standard size print you're going to get. So he's kept true to the size print. Now, you can see where the Parr, Martin Parr got influences from. You can see where it's all coming from. Now, this aspect of it was how he exhibited it. So I think, I'm not sure the gallery he exhibited this on, but he took this in this format and exhibited the whole array of pictures as like a mass of small Kodak developed pictures in a gallery, which was, I think at the time, pretty unheard of. So for a young guy with this vision to go out and do this at the time is a man who's hungry to learn something. But I think, as I said, this is, for me, it's, it's something which has been passed on by his influence around people like Warhol, people around that, that factory period of the 60s. And do you know what? I'd, I'd be honoured that if, if there was some comments by Stephen on this to put me right or wrong on it, because I'm not professing, and I'd love him to sort of bring up some narrative, some dialogue, sorry, within this. And these are fantastic. And these are 40 odd years old, you know? And they're, they're beautiful. And I, I, I see this work now with a lot of people. And it's about, well, I mean, a lot of people, a lot of contemporary um, photographers now see this sort of postcardy, snapshotty type photography. Um, what's also interesting is this, in this size, is like one of them sort of photo books you get with the sticky sleeves, isn't it? And, they, and you get there and you put them in and you put the, the, the plastic cover on. And this is what it's like. And it's, in a way, it's a quite a difficult view, this, because there's so much to take in. And we don't have that association with it because it's not our family. We have association with it for a totally different reason because it's, it's quite alien to us, a lot of this. But we have an association because we, 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 we respect the photographer's work, we respect and we want to find out a little bit about the way he's doing stuff. And he's just literally photographed in Colorado now. Everybody, everything, every girl, every house he's looked at which is found peculiar, everything. And what a way to serve your apprenticeship by doing something like this. I think it's a very clever book. I think it's a, a beautiful observation and it doesn't matter that all the pictures are not great, but all, actually it's about expression, it's about self-expression. It's about telling a story your way. And he is linking stuff up with the blood and the meat and the blood there and his Arizona. I think it's a real nice photographic album of a period of America I thought I knew everything about in terms of war films, in terms of the Watergate scandal, in terms of other um, the arms race and stuff like that. But I'm not going to show you all of it. I'm only on halfway through it. And I'm on page 100... No, I'm on a page... I'm on page 89. So I'm going to look at some of the pictures now. Doesn't that look like Fred West? It's crazy. There's a very nice, beautiful, subdued quality to this. In the... And the colours, look at them. This is, he's such an influence to modern day photography, he really is. He gives meaning to the ordinaries and he, he gives it some purpose. He gives it some interpretation and he's used it on a page to make the simple things important. It's got a beautiful colour tone to it. It's beautiful, look at that. Go out and just take pictures of everything. And what he does, which a lot of good photographers do with their books, you do have to edit down and he's using sort of the images 
There is some form of narrative in it where how the pictures work together on the different pages. Look at that. That's stunning. Let's come down on some more of these. Look at that. That is amazing. And you can see there's a repetition of TVs and consumerism and and look at that. There's a talk, there is a repetition all the way through of consumerism and food and shop windows and interesting people and it's look at this. This is great. Now this is July, you know, and you can see and I wonder if he's getting better at it, he's getting more confidence at it. And it makes it look so easy, you know. There's a, there's a, there's a real commitment that you're doing something like this. There's a repetitiveness of fridges and this portrait structure here. Now he's in Michigan. It's a really interesting portrait structure he's got. You can see it's just like full frontal flash. I'm just going to jump. And there's Eggleston in this, you know, and I wonder if there's in some inspiration in this, you know, from that Eggleston series. And I've got one of his books, and I look at Eggleston as well, you know, like, it, it's, you have to put yourself into 1970s and 1960s to really appreciate that, what they're doing with this photography and how colour's just this new medium of, of, of still photography, particularly, but, Everything can be visualised, you know, everything can be looked at and determined by how you compose and how and the colour and how they work together and edit and how you present them. But I think for me Stephen's view is, is fantastic. His understanding now we're coming to New York, back to New York, I guess. I would say New York November, and I don't know. He's gone out in his car at the beginning. He's obviously sold his car and he's flying back home, maybe. I don't know. Now, is this a continuation? This seems to be in England, by any chance, am I? Hmm. Oh, Florida. It's got England there. Or maybe he's continued just his travels. I'm on page 194. I have missed so much out. There's texture again, texture, walls, interiors of houses. Go make your own mind up with this. TVs again, small little bungalows. Oh, I've just touched it. I, I've just, I've just sort of touched on the surface. I've just touched on the surface of American Surfaces by Stephen Shaw. It's a wonder book. It's beautifully executed. It was so, shows so much vision at the end of where he's, the way he's exhibited it, the way the book's been brought out. And if you're going to look at this book, put yourself back to 1970. If you're a young guy and you're not even 20 yet or 18 yet, think about where and research a bit of what was going on in the early 70s and look at photography and then pick up this book and then start looking at it in that context. You can see it without that, without having any, any preconceived ideas of what America's about. But anyway, even if you did, this is not giving anything away because this is almost alien to everything else what was going on at the time. There's no, there's nothing in this which tells you how to think. It just gives you some insight and that's the beauty of this book. Well done, Stephen. Thank you.